Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Let's talk about what skincare ingredients you can mix together. Specifically, what can you mix with a retinoid cream or serum, whether it's prescription retinoids like tretinoin, tazeratine, triferritine, adapalene 0.3%, or over-the-counter stuff like retinol, retinol, retinaldehyde. So let's go over that in this video. First of all, thank you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you for subscribing. We're getting close to 400,000 subscribers, so thank you guys for your support I really appreciate it I'm having so much fun after three years of being on the channel this is great so let's keep it going today is a very important topic because I get these questions a lot in clinic so this is very relevant to my practice and also hopefully to you because you guys are being consistent on a good skincare regimen and what I love is that when you come to see me in clinic I can tell you know what you're doing and you're watching the channel because your skin's glowing you're doing well and you guys all know it's all about being consistent it's not a sprint mentality it's a marathon mentality we're low and slow wins the game and we don't wanna go back 10 steps with irritation by irritating our skin. So I know we get excited, we see a new skincare product and we wanna throw it into the regimen, but we gotta be very careful specifically with retinoids because retinoids are great, they're powerful at times and they can really help regenerate collagen and increase collagen production with and help with those fine lines and wrinkles, but it can cause irritation just like vitamin C can. Ascorbic acid or vitamin C is quite irritating too. So let's talk about that for example. Can you mix vitamin C serums with a retinoid? And the answer is, yes you can if you're an advanced user if you don't have sensitive skin like myself i can layer say skin better science alto which has 19 antioxidants and the alpha rep whether it's intensive or non-intensive and that's a double conjugated retinoid with lactic acid and glycolic acid and you can apply your alto vitamin c serum and then your retinoid right after that and a moisturizer and they don't interact they can layer up just fine and you get that extra glow up the next day my only thing is i don't do that every day you're playing with fire if you mix these two great ingredients together i I prefer to split them up vitamin C in the morning after your cleanse you can put a vitamin C serum you can moisturize and then put your sunscreen on and then at night you cleanse you put your retinoid on pea-sized amount to dry skin and then a moisturizer afterwards to help moisturize the skin so you don't get irritation so again vitamin C does not deactivate retinols but they can cause irritation if you combine them some people can call tolerate it for me maybe I'll do it like once in a while but not all the time the other question I get can you mix retinoids with exfoliants like like salicylic acid, lactic acid, glycolic acid. If it's a leave-on exfoliant, I would say don't do it. Don't mix it yourself. Rely on products that already have been manufactured together. For example, the Alpha Ret has the glycolic lactic acid with the retinoid, go for that. Or if you see me in clinic for acne, we have Epidule, Epidule Forte and Twinio, those are combining benzoyl peroxide with a retinoid, and that is gonna be something you can trust. There are people who can't tolerate it, but historically we've always worried about benzoyl peroxide leave-on being too much of a counteracting force to retinoids, and they might cancel each other out or decrease the potency of your retinoid. There's a study that was out that I read before that said that we are overestimating that potential interaction, and it's not as bad as we think, but it is possible to have it formulated, but like Twinio, the shelf life is only one month it's not very long your retinoid will work when benzoyl peroxide is mixed in so I prefer benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid cleansers when you have it cleansed off you can wash your face for you know a good 30 seconds to 60 seconds but once you wash it off it's not sitting there in a great quantity or high concentrations and it's less likely to irritate your skin versus a leave-on whether it's like the leave-on Paula's Choice BHA solution that's just so viral right now I would not combine that or layer it with a retinoid or if you had a benzoyl peroxide spot treatment say the La roche Posay Effaclard Dual with LHA plus benzoyl peroxide, I would not combine that with a retinoid. I'd keep that separate. But totally fine to do a cleanser with salicylic acid. This one's CeraVe's Acne Control Cleanser with salicylic acid. Or you can consider their Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser with 4% benzoyl peroxide or their 10% new one Acne Foaming Cream Wash. So you can consider these. We're using the little minis today to help illustrate. Now, those I recommend for cleansing before. I do that at the end of the day after clinic and then follow up with patting dry and then you can apply your retinoid and then a moisturizer. Moisturizer wise, it's okay to use any moisturizer if you want it with collagen, peptide, lipids. This one is from Skin Fix here. If you wanted the SkinCeuticals triple lipid, if you wanted something with peptides like Olay, Naturium, makes a nice peptide moisturizer. Those are all great for mixing with your retinoid because peptides are cell signaling. They do help with collagen production. Whereas collagen is a large, large protein. Who knows what it does in skincare 
but I like peptides in my moisturizers. And if you're in your late 30s and up, like myself, go for a peptide containing moisturizer to go with your retinol. I think that's a great combination. Other thing is niacinamide. Can niacinamide serums be mixed in with your retinol? Yes, it can. You can mix niacinamide or layer niacinamide with your retinol or retinoids. Niacinamide's great. It's, a vi it's vitamin B3, it's anti-inflammatory, can be soothing. It can regulate sebum production. I'm not a big fan of it by itself in a serum. I feel like I've seen people get a lot of irritation, specifically the ordinary is niacinamide serum. I think it's a great ingredient, but too much of a good thing can be harmful, but it works well with your retinol. And I like retinols with vitamin B3 in it, niacinamide. Like La Roche-Posay's retinol B3, the Olay Regenerous Retinol 24 has niacinamide in it. And then and peptides as well. And also, uh, I believe L'Oreal Paris makes a niacinamide plus retinol product, which is nice. Now, slugging. Can you put a petrolatum over retinol? I like slugging. Very small amount, pea size amount. After you cleanse, you can put a hydrating serum on and then put a little bit of Vaseline or Aquaphor or CeraVe healing ointment over your face. It has that nice little glazed donut look. Totally fine to do regularly because a small amount doesn't clog up your pores, but I don't recommend using that over an active ingredient like retinol retinoids because retinoids you want to apply it to dry skin not damp skin because it's very porous the skin when it's damp but it penetrates too much if you apply a thick ointment like aquaphor vaseline over your retinoid it's going to do the same thing and push it deeper in the skin it's called occlusion so if you have retinoids under occlusion it can cause irritation potentially and that's not what we want right we don't want that we don't want to go 10 steps back and cause irritation of our face so i'd avoid slugging with retinoids there are different retinoids whether it's the one percent or prescription retinoid this is the inculus one percent retinol just know that I wouldn't use the, the petroleum jelly for any of those. Now, next would be, can you use hyaluronic acid serums with retinol? This is snail mucin, lots of hyaluronic acid. This is rocks capsules, very nice um, hyaluronic acid serums. I like Vichy Mineral 89, I like Roche Posay's Hyu B5. So those are all great. Those are great options to do with your retinol. And if you wanna do it and layer, that's totally fine. You can apply your hyaluronic acid serum, your retinol, and then apply your moisturizer over it totally fine. Almost like sandwiching in your retinol, I'm fine with that. I don't think it increases the penetration of your retinol, you know, by putting hyaluronic acid first. I don't see that issue in my patients who do that. And for myself, if you have very sensitive skin, I'm all about sandwiching retinol with moisturizers, you know, moisturizer, a nice layer of say CeraVe PM lotion first, then your retinol, and then apply another layer of lotion right after it. I'm all for it. That's really nice if you're starting off on a retinol. Now, the other thing you could do in the winter time when it's a little colder and you have the heaters on, do a thicker cream like Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. That's my favorite one to sandwich with a retinol or prescription retinoid like tretinoin. That one is really nice, it's cooling, it's a thicker texture than a lotion like the CeraVe PM lotion. So I go for that in the winter time. I wouldn't recommend like people on TikTok, they're squeezing the whole tube of tretinoin and mixing it into a jar of moisturizer. I feel like that would affect the shelf life potency of your tretinoin because you're laying a lot of different elements in, specifically light into the jar every time you open it up oxygen's hitting it. So I wouldn't recommend that. So keep it separate. I'd rather layer things and mixing it all up and then applying it to your face. People say you have to wait a few minutes between, you could maybe wait 60 seconds in between moisturizing, then your retinoid, and then another 60 seconds. But layering is the key to go and not mixing, okay? So I think we covered everything, guys. So we can say sunscreen for sure during the day. You can, if you have a, a, a photo stable encapsulated retinoid, you can use your retinoid and a sunscreen right after. I have no issues with like a, a chemical-based sunscreen like Neutrogena's Hydro Boost Moisturizer with SPF. You could do something like that. I'd say try to have a good routine. Mine is my retinoids at night, even if it's photo stable at times. Not all of them are, but if they are photo say, well, I'll still use it at night, right? Just to keep my routine going. So please hit the like button. Please share with your friends. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for supporting the channel and have a great fall winter with your retinoid. Stay consistent, guys. Peace.